I was a designer for a textile company and I was traveling in Mexico City working on a collaborative project with a company down there and I had a big presentation. I'd lost my pen and I thought to myself, I'm going to buy a nice fountain pen. I think that would just really set the look and the feel for this design meeting. I knew nothing about fountain pens or what it should cost, so I thought to myself, 50 to 80 dollars is a yeah, that's got to be a great pen, right? So I walked into this little boutique, picked up a pen, thinking it should be in that price range, knowing nothing about fountain pens, and uh, the gentleman behind the counter said, well, that'll be $275, please. And I looked at him kind of funny, and I just said, pesos? <laughs> and he said, no dollars. And I was, I was shocked that a, uh, a, a pen made of synthetic materials could cost that much. Being a woodworker and doing sculptural furniture over the years, I, it just kind of, the light bulb went on. Um, that I would love to use my processes and my materials to do something. I asked the gentleman, do you sell many of these? He said, we sell a couple a week. And I thought, if one small boutique is selling a couple of these expensive pens, um, you know, I thought, well, there's a market here. And so I called my wife from the airport in Mexico City and I said, honey, we just started a pen company. You can imagine her surprise. Well, I focus on natural materials. That's always been what my company has been about and personally what I've been about. I have uh, been passionate about wood since I got into sculptural um, furniture and doing uh, sculpture with bronze casting. Years ago, I was an art major focusing on those, those um, processes at the University of Georgia and it just kind of stuck with me. So when I make my pens, I like to use uh, I think rare woods. I do a lot with burl woods. For those of you who don't know what a burl is, the burl are those growths that you see on the side of a tree. Like this, for instance, here is a vasticola burl, which comes from Australia. Um, the inside has got these beautiful colors, these swirls. The outside has this really gnarly texture. It's just a fantastic thing. Some of the neatest uh, things in the world. One of the other materials that I really enjoy working with is a stone called Labradorite. Labradorite is an iridescent stone that comes from Madagascar. You can see the flare here when the light hits it. It goes in this brilliant green to gold to yellow or blue. Just some of the most beautiful things. It was originally discovered in Labrador, Canada, hence the name Labradorite. It's actually a type of feldspar. Um, I'm sourcing my stone from Madagascar. It's a wonderful place. The color from the rocks coming out of Madagascar are much better than the Canadian stones right now. So this is where I'm sourcing my stones from. I also do a lot with naturally shed moose antler. Moose antler has got to be my all-time favorite material. The reason being, it's a renewable resource that renews every year. The moose will drop their horns. I've got a guy in Montana that picks up the natural sheds every year. He sells it to me by the pound, so the antler will show up to me like this. I'll create the pen, and what I like about moose antler is it's beautiful for scrimshaw work. I do a lot of artwork on my pens, and this is my favorite canvas to work on. All of my fountain pens will come fitted with a German-made nib. Now, you may choose a rollerball, and it uses a common refill that you can find at any office supply store, but uh, the fountain pens, I get most of my nibs from Yovo, which is a German company. Many of the major brands right now are using our nibs. They're exceptionally smooth. They are great writers. I also offer 18 karat gold nibs uh, made by the same company. Uh, they all also are very smooth writers. I offer extra fine through broad. So I can, uh, I can do whatever you need in terms of your writing style. I also offer a stub metallic in the number 5 a 1.1 and also in the number 6 a 1.1 and a 1.4 millimeter. You know, I enjoy hand painting. I enjoy doing the scrimshaw work as well. Uh, everything starts off with a hand drawing. And uh, after I get my hand drawing, I digitize it. And instead of using a little scribe and etching the antler by hand, it was just pricing everybody out of the marketplace. My pens were just far too expensive and they just weren't moving. So I uh, invested in a CNC engraver. And the CNC engraver will take my original artwork and engrave it into the antler with extreme detail. And I, I really enjoy the creative process of drawing that. And I especially like doing nautical type work. I have a series of designs that I call the dangers of the deep that has the ship and the tempest. I've got the sirens from the Odyssey. I've got Kraken, Blackbeard. I've got a Viking raiding party, and I've got a Moby Dick scene. I really, really enjoy that. As much as I enjoy doing that, I think I'm probably more passionate about the hand painting. Uh, my background is in painting as well as sculpture, and I enjoyed that very much. And when I, I thought of doing the painting on the pens, it really kind of brought all of the things I like doing the most together and uh, I do a lot of wildlife artwork. You'll notice on my website and some of the other blogs that I've been featured on, 
you see a lot of birds and I don't know why everybody commissions birds from me but it just seems to be the things um, that come my way most often so I'm also working on a big cat series they're all hand-painted pens I've done a black jaguar in a Brazilian rainforest I've got an African lion charging across the plains with Mount Kilimanjaro in the background and I've done the American mountain lion standing proudly in front of Long's Peak in Colorado um, the next one I'm going to do is probably a leopard, but I focus on wildlife artwork, but that's not all I can do. So uh, I do a lot of custom things and that can, that can run uh, the spectrum of motifs. You know, people ask me all the time, how big do I want my company to get? You know, I like it small. We're a family run business. My son has a little workbench out here. He's three and a half. He's, he's out here playing with me. My girls, they help. I've got an eight and a, an 11 year old. And, and they come out here and they help me out with some things. My wife does a lot of the billing and a lot of the shipping and that type of thing. And I like that family aspect. I did the corporate American thing for 13 years and it was a really stressful thing that I don't want to incorporate into Ryan Crusack Studios. You can find my pens online at fountainpenstudios.com and my new website that I'm working on slowly but surely is called rkspens.com. And you, my favorite place to sell are at pen shows. If you haven't been to a pen show, you really should come out. They're a great place to see everything from vintage pens to modern pens. And there's just so many neat people that you'll meet. It's a great community to be involved in. Um, I enjoy going to the pen shows because I get to talk about what I do on a greater level than I can possibly put into my website. Um, so you get a little bit more background about the materials. We can discuss things. So if you don't go to a pen show, there's 12 of them that I go to a year. So just Google it, find where the nearest one to you is and come on out and see us.